Hello and welcome, you're watching Best of the Bets. My name's Christina Nicolaides and I'm with our regular guest, Sam Diamond, who's editor of Best of the Bets, and our bookie, extraordinaire that is, that's Gareth Walker from uh, Heaven Bets. Um, great week in a Premier League, games to look forward to, but Gareth, we are going to start with a promotion, rugby promotion, Allez Le Bleu. Allez Le Bleu, yes indeed. This weekend sees the start of the Six Nations Championship. Um, Heaven Bet have got a great offer. Um, if you place an outright bet um, and France win the Six Nations uh, Championship, then losing bets will be refunded on any of the other five teams. OK. Uh, we are going to start looking at the early kickoff on Saturday, which is QPR versus Norwich. Sam? Another excellent point for QPR in the week against Manchester City. Um, and it, it's again what we've talked about so many times now, the fact that the way they set up and they can keep these big, te big teams at bay and it's a, another clean sheet to go with the ones against Chelsea and against yeah. Tottenham. 405 minutes is that now with one goal conceded? It's, it's been excellent. But the thing with QPR is nil-nil draws now aren't going to keep them up. They're they going to have to start. Bottom. They're still bottom. They're going to have to start winning games. And this game against Norwich now on Saturday is huge in, t in terms of their survival aspirations. I, I, I have a feeling Norwich can go here and uh, upset QPR because QPR are going to have to come out with a different game plan. They can't just sort of be so defensive minded. They're going to have to go for it. And they've really struggled against the, the teams at the bottom this season. You look at the prices, QPR are 1.95. They're odds on to win again. They're, they're rock bottom of the league. For all their defensive improvement, they haven't been winning games. Yeah. And they're 1.95 to win at home. 3.5 for the draw, Norwich are a 4.1. Um, I guess Norwich, it's a, it's a great time to play Norwich. They're, they've had a, they've had a tougher run of fixtures, but they haven't done well. If QPR can start scoring some goals, this is their chance. Um, they have had some great results against the big teams, but it's how they've played against the bottom teams that interest me. Yeah. The five main rivals for the drop, um, they've all played and they've taken three points from those games. And to be honest, they've been woeful in all of those games. So I, I, I certainly wouldn't be trusting QPR at odds on. Um, Norwich, I mean, 4.1's big. I know Sam's keen on that. Um, I'll start off with a nice bit of sitting on the fence and go for a draw at 3.5 in this one. Um, could well be nil-nil, in fact. Um, both teams struggling to score recently. Nil-nil is 10.2, which is a, a bet that I like a lot. OK, Wigan versus Southampton. Yeah, the 3.6 to win at Wigan. Uh, Wigan at home are 2.1. The draw is 3.5 and Southampton 3.6. A very spirited performance at Old Trafford in the week. Even um, even got compliments from uh, Sir Alex Ferguson. Uh, but I, what I do think is, I, I wonder how much uh, a performance like that may well have taken out of them. Wigan will have had an extra day's rest. They got a very good result at Stoke themselves, coming back from 2-0 down. Yeah. Um, I, I think Wigan are a good side as well. I, I, I really like Wigan. I actually I, I, I was involved heavily on Southampton when they played Wigan in their first home game of the season and they showed a real naivety in the top flight uh, and were beaten comfortably. So I, I'm not going to make that mistake again. And just the way things are going with Wigan, they, they, I think they're really starting to find a bit of form. Yeah, but it's almost like we've been waiting for Wigan to, to click into gear. They do look good. They've won one in 11 or two in 14, whichever way you like to look at it. Well, you may, you may want to look at it that like they've lost one, one in six, and that was a very unfortunate 3-2 defeat to Sunderland. So. Yeah, but that sort of summed up the season. They were by far the better team, and yet just conceded some ridiculous goals at the other end and ended up losing a game where they had, what, 75% possession in the, in the second half. It was, it was a nonsense. But they keep, that keeps on happening. So um, for me, the bet here is, is to go, go with Southampton on the road at 3.6. Uh, maybe a, a speculative correct score. Three one um, is priced at twenty one, and uh, I, I think there should be should be a few goals at this one. So I'm happy to go. I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to go with Wigan, and I like Wigan to win two 0 Two 0 which is eight point eight. Okay, Reading versus Sunderland. Well, these are two luckiest teams in the Premier League. <laughs> I mean, the comeback kids, Reading again. It's unbelievable. I don't think you can dismiss luck as well, and I think that's such a key habit to get into when you're down the bottom. Yeah. I should stress, it's better to be lucky than, it, than to, be, to be good. And, you know, obviously the, the credit, they've worked very hard and some of their turnarounds have shown a, a great team spirit, but there has been a lot of luck involved. Um, and you look at a team like Aston Villa and, and there's just absolutely no luck whatsoever. So Reading, they're getting into a good habit. Uh, they're strong at home and another you know, great point against Chelsea in the week. I think they'll beat Sunderland. I think they'll beat them 1-0. 2.4 to win. 1-0 uh, is 7.5. I think that's five games in seven Reading have won, actually, in all, all competitions now. Um, Sunderland are on a decent run themselves. Five wins in, in nine. Um, but, I mean, they didn't even have a shot against Swansea. They were, they were outclassed, stuck in there, got a point. So credit to them. I can't see that they'll be dragged back in the relegation battle now. No. So 
fair play to them. Maybe Reading will nick it 2-1, 8.4. And so much credit to Alan Lafondra, who, who's been marvellous off the bench lately. The player, like I said, <laughs> wouldn't make it at League One level a few You're years quite ago, right, so. he hasn't. Um, he's, he has been labelled the super sub. Yeah. Well, he is, and there's an interesting angle here because uh, Lafondra is 5.3 to score the last goal in the game. You can bet on first goal scorer or last goal scorer, the same prices. Lafondra comes on 20 minutes to go and he, he scores Two. every single time. So, yeah, yeah that's, that's a bet I'd definitely be uh, very keen on. And uh, Everton versus Aston Villa. I mean, Everton, what, I mean what, are the, what are the odds to start off with well, Everton, Everton to win? Everton are 1.4. Yeah. Uh, the draw is 4.5 and Aston Villa 9.5. That, that's been backed on the strength of uh, the, the respective midweek performances. Um, can you look beyond Everton Can you at really back Aston Villa? I, I, I've been trying to make a case for backing Aston Villa in, in recent weeks and what we've seen at times has been sort of, you know, some 45 minute bursts of very yeah. good football from Aston Villa. They were, I thought they were excellent at West Brom in the first half and they really gave it a go against Newcastle in the second half. If they could put those two together and produce a, a game of football, I think they, they'll start to get themselves out of trouble. But you can't, <laughs> you just couldn't get but, with them at the moment. But even Paul Lambert, he looked so disheartened when he was interviewed during the week. I mean, and that must that must reflect back in the back in the uh, in the dressing room as well. Well, the, the last time they were in Liverpool, they won at Anfield and brilliant, and, and everything looked good, and things had clicked into place, and people got, people got very very carried away. But when I mean, you look at their recent form, they've lost to Bradford, they've lost to Millwall, yeah. they, they've allowed Newcastle their first away win in goodness knows how long, as you well know. Um, I mean, the season just lurches from bad to worse. Um, surely Everton will, will prevail. Two one, which seems to be the uh, default scoreline at Goodison season, is seven point seven. Yeah, um, and that that's where I'd be be looking for this one? I think one thing Aston Villa do have in their favour here is they've got a very good record at Goodison Park. They haven't been beaten in their last six trips there. Uh, I, I think Everton will win here. I like 3-1, but I do like Villa. I think there'll be a bit of a reaction early on. I think they'll hold them to the break. I and so I like draw half-time, Everton full-time. That's 4.2 for the draw half-time, Everton full-time, and it's 10.2 for the 3-1 uh, that, that uh, Sam mentioned there. OK. If you want to place your bet on any of this weekend's games and much more, then head to our website www.heavenbet.com and follow us now on Twitter at Best of the Bets. We're going to look at Newcastle versus Chelsea, but before I ask the guys what they think, we're going to find out what Mike Holden has to say. I can see it being a very tight game against Chelsea, potentially, uh, you know, big draw value. Um, and, and low goals is another option potentially um, under two and a half goals if you can get at odds against is is looks a decent play because I think I don't think Newcastle will be taking the game to Chelsea um, especially seeing how Chelsea have picked teams off on the road on occasions in recent weeks um, I think it could be a low scoring affair and Newcastle's approach will be to try and nick the game 1-0 but in in doing so, they might leave themselves open to losing the game 1-0 if Chelsea get that chance. Either way, I see a tight game. Um, I'd be surprised if both teams score twice. Completely agree. I think it will be a very tight game at St James's Park. It's 2.05 .05 for the under two and a half goals there. Uh, the match price is Newcastle at 4.4, the draws 3.55 and Chelsea 1.9. Any interest in in back in Chelsea. Sam, is it the start of the French Revolution? It may well have started at Villa Park on uh, Tuesday, but Alan Pardew really has a tough job now on integrating so many new foreign players into his team. Yeah. Uh, they got a very easy start with Aston Villa, but Chelsea are obviously going to be a much different proposition. Am I prepared to fire into Chelsea at 1.9? I don't think so. Uh, draws are Reading and Brentford haven't really filled me with confidence despite the fact that I've raved about their away form in the past. Yeah. Uh, they may well win. If I was to, you know, forced into to back a score, I'd probably go 2-1 Chelsea, but I wouldn't want to back them on the 90-minute betting. Instead, if I'm going to have a bet, I'm going to look at uh, Denver Parr returning to Newcastle. What a story that would be, of course. It would be. Will and, he celebrate? Uh, <laughs> well, possibly not. He's, he's 4.3 to score the first goal. And I, I do think there's a possibility here that Newcastle, suddenly everyone's thinking, oh, everything's fine again, brilliant, we've won at Aston Villa. We're fine. Well, yeah. no, nah, not necessarily. Chelsea could turn up and really put on a performance here. Yeah, Chelsea but that, like... that's the operative word, though, could, well, because they don't always turn up and perform. They, well, they usually always, do at Newcastle, to be fair. Though. They're unbeaten in the last five trips. Though, yeah, so. I, I, I do think that there is a, a real possibility that Chelsea will thrive playing away from home in, yeah. in a stadium where the, the crowd are on the opposition's back for. I think if, if Newcastle go behind early, it could well uh, finish in a, a fairly comfortable victory. 3-0, yeah. even 4-0 is 4-0's 25. 
Um, and I'm prepared to take a chance on that at a, uh, a big price. Um, yes, Chelsea provided us with lots of laughs with their ridiculous uh, results recently. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that at, at the prices available here, um, I'd much rather be on Chelsea for a, for a decent sized win here and uh, the tsunami revolution to be uh, put on hold for a, a few more weeks. OK. What? Fulham versus Manchester United. Gareth, what do we think? Yeah, Fulham playing a Manchester team for the third show in a row. Fulham are 5.6 to win this one uh, on home turf. Uh, the draw is 4.1, Manchester United 1.6. Fulham have taken the lead against some big teams this season, uh, Arsenal, Manchester City and that United game, and haven't held on in any of them. And it seems to be a running theme with Fulham's season. And I can see Fulham troubling Manchester United early on, as Southampton did. The defence is still very dodgy at United. Uh, but the thing with United is so many times this season they've turned games around 24 points from losing positions. Uh, and you know, contrastingly, Fulham have dropped 18 points from being in the lead. So I like a turnaround this weekend. It's not often a bet I go for, but if you can get some you know, big prices about Fulham half-time, Manchester United full-time, I'd have a little dabble there. Yeah, it's priced at 20, so it, it makes sense. If you look at, yeah. the, look at the evidence there, it's great. I mean, I've been, uh, been looking to take on Manchester United so many times this season. It sounded like a bit of a broken record, but you know, they, 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 they didn't convince again against Southampton, but yet again you have to recognise the fact that they got the, got the result and they got the job done, got the three points. Yeah. Um, I think the, the player with the last three games we've discussed have been um, odds-on favourites that I like. Um, if you put Ch uh, Everton, Chelsea and Manchester United together mm -hmm. uh, in a treble, you, you're getting four for your money, basically. So I, I'd be not, not so keen on the, just the single Manchester United to, to win at Fulham at 1.6, but really nice bet there for the three big teams there, Everton, Chelsea, Manchester United, all to win. Uh, pairs four, which is a, a bet that, that looks looks very good. Uh, Arsenal versus Stoke. Yeah, Arsenal 1.4, uh, the draw 4.5, Stoke 8.5. I mean, Arsenal remain unconvincing to me. Fantastic for 20 minutes against Liverpool, but... Well, they came this... back, didn't they, to take the game 2-2. Yeah, two. but that defence, I mean, what what's going on? I've seen... It's it's an insult to Sunday league teams to say it's, uh, it's Sunday league defending. As far as these two are concerned, I'm still having nightmares from the nil-nil ball draw that they served up earlier in the season. Uh, and I think this will be another sort of, you know, quite dull game. Um, Arsenal have had trouble breaking down some defensive teams at the Emirates this season. Swansea, mm -hmm. QPR, Sunderland. Uh, so I can see this being goalless for a long time. Uh, but the thing with Arsenal is they've scored 18 goals in the last 10 minutes of games in all competitions this season. So, you know, they, they show a certain amount of sort of defiance just towards the end there. I'm going to go for most goals to be scored in the second half here. Uh, it's odds against actually 2.05 and yeah Arsenal do tire teams out there. They do have all this attacking creativity uh, but I think we'll find it tough. 1-1 one, one I like here which is, is 8.3. Stoke not great over the, the Christmas and New Year period but mm. you know real solid performance against Manchester City in the Cup last week so I, I think there'll be there could be a, a frustrating afternoon in store at the Emirates for uh, Arsenal fans. OK, and now we're going to move on to West Ham versus Swansea. Yeah, 2.3 for, for West Ham, who must be low on confidence after having a disaster of losing to Fulham. Uh, draw 3.4, Swansea 3.2. Swansea, did, well, drew against Sunderland. 0-0 uh, specialist now, Swansea, mm. I think. It was, yeah, the, the fourth time in five games that they failed to score. And uh, Swansea's attention are now going to be on that Capital One Cup. It's just three weeks away. Uh, I'm very certain that this game will end 1-0 to West Ham United which is seven. Um, I like the obvious, really. If, if Swansea are having all these goalless draws, then another one is, is, is a fair possibility. And it's, it's priced at 10. I think that's a, a great price. OK, best bet for Saturday, Gareth. I like Southampton at 3.6. I think they're, they're looking the part. Um, unlucky at Old Trafford in the week. Wigan not convincing me. Um, and I think 3.6 is a very nice price. I'm going to go Reading to beat Sunderland at 2.4. Um, hopefully they good luck can rub off on me. OK, and I'm going to go um, for Fulham, Manchester United, Fulham half-time, Man United full-time. Following in the, the editor extraordinaire, Sam Diamond. Good tactics. It's 20 for that, pro, for that okay. bet. That's all we've got time for for, uh, for Saturday. Remember, for you to place your bets, it's www.heavenbet.com. And you can now follow us on Twitter at Best of the Bets. Join us after the break where we look at Sunday's games and the European action. Allez le bleu is yet another brilliant heaven bet money back offer. If France win the Six Nations Rugby Tournament, then heaven bet will refund losing outright bets on any of the five other nations. Don't miss out on this offer fantastique. Log on to heaven bet today.